How's it going everyone? In today's video we're going to be looking at 5 great NumPy features. Now before we get started it's important you check whether you have NumPy installed in your project, otherwise none of this is going to work. If you don't have it installed type in pip install NumPy. I already have this requirement satisfied so I'm all set. Next we need to obviously import NumPy as NP which stands for no problem. I'm just kidding of course, NP is the abbreviation or the naming convention we always use for NumPy. And later on in my code I am going to be using something from collections which is going to be a counter. Now with that we can get started with great feature number one, broadcasting. Broadcasting allows us to perform arithmetic operation between arrays of different sizes by automatically expanding the smaller array along the mismatched dimensions. In short, it saves us a lot of writing by letting us avoid verbose looping to achieve the same result. So what we're going to do here is create an array, which will be an NP array with the values of 1, 2, and 3. Then we're going to print this array plus 10. And what this is going to do is apply this operation to each one of these elements, which means that when we run this, we're going to get 11, 12, and 13 as an output, which is actually quite cool. We didn't have to create any complex for loops to achieve this result. We just had to use broadcasting. And we can do this with other arithmetic operations. We can also see what happens if we raise everything to the second power. And when we run this, what we're going to get as a result is one, four, and nine. So NumPy applied this operation to each one of these elements. And as I mentioned earlier, this also works on arrays of different dimensions. For example, we might have a matrix, which will equal a NumPy array, and this will contain a matrix, which is just a two-dimensional NumPy array. So one, two, three, and four, five, and six. Then we're going to create a vector, which is a one-dimensional NumPy array. And that's going to equal a NumPy array with 10, 20, and 30. This has to be inside parentheses. Next, we can print the matrix plus the vector. And as you can see, both of these are of two different dimensions, but that's not going to stop NumPy from broadcasting. As you can see, we got this as a result. 10 was added to each and every one of these elements in the matrix. Moving on to feature number two, masking. Masking is a feature that allows us to hide or mask values based on a certain condition. Imagine you have an array of values, but you only care about values that are greater than five. Well, we can create a mask for that. So once again, we will create an array and that will contain the values of one, five, seven, two, nine, and 10. Next, we can create a mask, which will equal array greater than five. Now we can print masked followed by the array with the mask. And when we run this, you're going to notice that we successfully applied the mask to the array. This array only contains the values of seven, nine, and 10 now. What's interesting about this is that we can also use a mask to replace values everywhere that the condition is met. For example, we can type in array where the array is greater than five. We want to fill all those values with zero. The next time we print this array, we're going to end up with the same array, except every value that was greater than five is now replaced by a zero. And just one more example to really make sure you get the hang of this, we're going to create another mask, which is going to equal the array modulus operator two is equal to zero. And then we're going to print this array with the mask once again. And as you guessed it, we're only going to get back the even numbers because here we told NumPy that we only want to get values back that are divisible by two. Up next, we have feature number three, where. Where is a very useful method that allows us to return a value based on a condition. So for this example, we're going to create a NumPy array. And this time I'm just going to paste in this NumPy array, which contains the values of five, 10, 15, 20, negative five, and two. After that, we're going to create a result which will equal NumPy where the array is greater than 10. Now, when that evaluates to true, we want to return that it is a high number. Otherwise, if that evaluates to false, we want to return a low number. Now, when we print this result, what you're going to notice is that we're going to get this NumPy array back of low and high. Since five and 10 were not greater than 10, it returned low. So those were replaced by low. 15 and 20, on the other hand, were greater than 10. So it replaced those with high. 
And finally, the last two numbers were not greater than 10, so those values were replaced with low. And the whole reason I imported the counter was just to display the results. So right below, we can type in counter, counter, type string, will equal a counter with the result to list. Because right now, the result is a NumPy array. So we need to convert it to a list to use it as Python's native list type. Now for key and value pair, in counter.items, what we're going to do is print the formatted string of key colon v. And we need to make sure to use parentheses here. Now, the next time we run this, we should end up with an output that tells us how many low values there are and how many high values there are. Moving on to feature number four, special indexing. Now, I wanted to include this because the syntax is quite funky but still straightforward. And I think it would be really fun to have this as part of vanilla Python, but it's good that they didn't include it because outside of NumPy, I don't think I'd be able to read code that used it without special documentation. So let's get started with a regular array and use this supposedly special indexing syntax to grab some of these elements. Here we have our NumPy array. Next, I'm going to create a variable called indices, which will contain zero, two, four and five. And finally, we're going to print the array at these indices. And when we run this, what we're going to get as an output are the elements at those indices. So we have 10 at the index of zero, 30 at the index of two, 50 at the index of four and 60 at the index of five. How funky is that? It grabs each element respectively. And you can also directly include this inside the array. So we don't have to create another variable. We can just run it like this. And I actually tried to do this directly in Python because I thought, why not? But unfortunately it doesn't work. But something else that's very funky is that we can also modify arrays using slice syntax. So array from the index of one to four equals 999, 999 and 999. And now when we print this array, what we should end up with is 10, and 999 replacing the next three elements. And again, I'm calling this funky because we can't do it in vanilla Python. We can also choose to be specific with the insertions using the syntax I showed you earlier. So here we're going to type in at the index of one, at the index of three, and at the index of four. Now, when we run this, it's going to replace those elements with our new elements. Just make sure you have the correct amount of elements, otherwise you're going to end up with an exception. And finally, we have feature number five, clip. And clip is good for limiting outliers in data. So suppose you are processing an image and some values all of a sudden go out of bounds, which can easily happen when trying to increase the brightness or something along those lines. So here we're going to have some pixels, which will equal an array. And inside here, we're going to use 100, 180, 260, and during the processing, minus 20, 90, and 300. Right below it, we're going to create a variable called clipped so that we can use numpy.clip. And what we want to insert as the first argument are the pixels. Then we can set the limits. For example, here we want to set zero and 255. We don't want any values to exceed zero or 255. Those will be the limits for the array which means that when we print this, what you're going to see is that the limiter was applied to our array. Every value that's above 255 will be reduced to the upper limit. Every value that's below zero will be normalized to zero. And it's quite cool how easy this is to use. Anyway, that's really all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below if NumPy interests you and I'll make more videos about it. But otherwise, with all that being said, Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.